Well, hello, my friends, and today is Friday, the last episode, maybe not the last episode, so we have Zufar with hey. us again. And, you know, this plein air, uh, Eastern plein air is about Zufars. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking. Yeah. So, uh, I just like, would like to explain that this building is called Armory, waterfall a uh, festival happening in November. So, but in July, it's used as a base uh, gallery in Easton, and they call it a library. So we have paintings which are not part of competition, at least until Sunday. Uh, they're here, and it's open from Friday morning, from today. And there is another building, which is just across the street. Right there. It's called the Academy Art Museum in Easton, Maryland. And that show, was installed yesterday it's not open yet it will be open tonight for the collector's preview and awards party and there there are 116 paintings wow so two That's paintings of each uh, artist who was selected to competition all right uh, so it's a big show and nobody have seen it uh, just just us just those who participate have seen it all right so we'll get to that building later on to, to tonight yes. because we bought a ticket to actually get to and we go as a, you know, Zufar's manager. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes. But we're gonna step inside this museum, uh, I mean gallery, and see other works uh, because you know, later on we'll be in that building and we won't have time to actually check, you know, the painting in this building. So let's go inside and check out the work. Here we go. Well, unfortunately, we are late and people. In the gallery did not let us go um, because they're trying to prepare for tonight's show. So, what are we going to do? We are going to actually we will be painting tomorrow. Quick draw, plain, air, plain. Air, I mean, Eastern plain air. A quick draw competition tomorrow from 10 to 12. Is what we'll be painting. Uh, I'll, I'll be painting as well. So, what are we going to do right now? We are going to go through the blocks streets and find something to paint tomorrow and so tomorrow we're gonna have another episode about quick draw probably short um, so let's go on the streets of Easton it's a historical downtown of Easton we have four streets that kind of um, put the boundaries on area and you cannot paint anything outside you have to paint everything inside these boundaries so we're gonna go scouting as usual and see if, I, if we can find something to paint well, this is one right here building and another building right here the thing is right now we are at what four o'clock so the sun will be completely flipped tomorrow. So, you know, even you know, if you look in this building, this side, this side of, oops, <laughs> this side of the building will be in the lit up and this will be in the shadow. So maybe, well, let's keep going. So far, yeah. so how you select what to paint, especially for quick, quick draw, what is your thinking? So when I choose uh, my scene, of course, the, the, the main factor, among others, but main factor is um, time, time pressure. I cannot call myself, I got used to very quick painting, drawing. So two hours, quite often, it, it's, it's not the common time for me to complete the painting. So I will need to choose composition. First, of course, should be interesting. Subject should be nicely lit. We have a geometric, emotional and coloristic or chromatic uh, interest um, of course I would like to include some sceneries which uh, have uh, I think has maybe some historic significance um, or something which people enjoy and I enjoyed in the past let's say like a restaurant if I had a beer before or ate or had been sitting with friends with other peer artists or collectors, I could choose that thing. So that would be interesting thing. At the same time, I will try to limit myself to simpler compositions. So because two hours, 
it's not the time when uh, I can do thousand details after first and second layers are done so that's from all this together usually day before uh, from planning I come up with idea what will be uh, select a scenery and and I keep thinking about it during the night uh, sometimes sketching is a good idea because it's not forbidden it's actually encouraged because everyone wants to and artists and organizers and collectors want to see good painting so whatever works whatever we can do uh, starting with a blank canvas but all other prep work done uh, it's all beneficial so we are here to create good art valuable art um, share it with other people share our skills knowledge a lot of people come and just watch are watching for a few years and then they come and start participating so we want to be also uh, people who can inspire other people to see beauty to be able to be creative uh, to develop skills pass it maybe to other people or maybe to children or grandchildren it's all it's all good <laughs> so we are walking on the streets of Eastern right now uh, with Zufar, he's right there and looking for looking for place to oh location to paint can I show you a piece? hello hey how are you doing? I'm good good, oh, good. Yeah, I can see you. <laughs> good to see you nice very nice the model is a friend of mine actually she's the lady getting out of the car over there in the look at that blue dress oh, so, look at that her blue dress huh even though the heat so. yeah right <laughs> yeah, we subjected her to some nice work. Here today. <laughs> we'll have to go enter this in the library. Yeah. So this is a space where we will be painting tomorrow. This corner. Um, so view this way, view this way. Houses this way and houses this way. And the company actually the gallery will be on this street, so wouldn't have to go and run. So this will be the spot. So they, did, they just opened the door to the gallery, so we're going to actually see the paintings. So let's see all around. Uh, this is collectors and the artists together. So let's go inside and see. And much, much less people right now. And that's the reason I'm recording, because before that, you couldn't even, you know, stand here, it was packed. It was so loud. So right now it's less people, so we can actually record something. This is uh, gallery number one, and we'll go to gallery number two. And that's actually Susie Baker. And we'll meet with her. All right, now this is the final product of Zufar Bigbov. Two paintings that he was working on. This is, let me show you closer. This is the big one, and this is an awesome nocturne that he did. So, oh, Zufar, a couple words. So, I, I was happy to share a story of creation of these pieces because each painting comes with its story of idea, development, and sometimes even after painting, you realize what was moving, what it was moving me to paint it and uh, communicating to collectors, to art lovers really helps to uh, realize and retrieve something from maybe some consciousness, I mean from from deeper level of my uh, mind and um, create that solid foundation uh, and also helps to move uh, and look forward to create more beautiful, deep, emotionally rich art. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to another gallery to actually. Yeah, we're going. So we're going for our words. And this is. Come on, say hi. Hello, and welcome <laughs> once again from the world of painting. Tonight we feature the color blue in 77 different shades and incarnations. Follow us, we'll explain later. 
now we're going to another building uh, for awards. So we'll know who got awards, who not got awards, and I will come back uh, to gallery and just show you. It will be less people, so less noise, so we'll be able to actually see the paintings. So let's go. We uh, are so grateful to everyone here, artists and collectors alike, and volunteers, and all the folks that make this event happen. We are enormously grateful. Uh, for your support of this event and really the whole community embracing Plenary Easton in the way that has has transpired so it's really something special and I hope that you own that you are a part of that specialness. Our judge this evening is Dan Weiss he is president and CEO of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York I think most of you have heard of that small little institution up the street so, uh, you know, obviously it's one of the largest and most important museums in the world. And so we really are so grateful uh, for Dan for being here. We, again, are so grateful to Dan for being here and for being our judge. And uh, no more words. Let's get to the business here. Thank you, Dan. Well, good evening. It is a great pleasure to be here and an honor and a privilege to have had this really hard job. Um, the quality of, of works that I had a chance to look at during this uh, plein air period have been really quite extraordinary. So it is an honor to be part of this. And I did the best I could making the judgments that I can, but there are lots of ways for this to have gone. And they're, they're, as you all know, the work's extraordinary and we're all lucky to be part of it. So it is my pleasure now to announce the winners and I will do so as soon as Al gives me the high sign. Ready? Okay, here we go. So the first award, the Judge's Choice Award, sponsored by Margaret Wrightson and David Bellis. The first winner is All Is Quiet Now, uh, Sarah Linda Polly. The second Judge's Choice Award, sponsored by Margaret Wrightson and David Bellis, is Solitary Man by Lon Brower. And the next Judge's Choice Award, sponsored by Margaret Wrightson and David Bellis, is Easton Gothic by Jill Glassman. Okay, the next award is Best Use of Light sponsored by Betty Huang at Studio B Gallery. And the winner is Bound by Daniel Robbins. The next award is Best Painting by a Maryland Artist, sponsored by Kate Quinn. And the winner is All is Peace, Nancy Tankersley. see that some of you know Nancy. That's great. Okay, the next award is Best Watercolor, sponsored by the Trip Gallery, and the winner is Oxford Tree Line by David Sant.
Thank you. Thank you. The next award is Best Nocturne, sponsored by Leslie Lobel and Eric Timsack. And the winner is, aptly named, Nocturne, 11.44 p.m. Krista Pisano. Award in recognition of Sue and Joe Bredekamp. And the winner is Tal Talbot County Dawn, John Brandon Sills. Come to Best New Artist to Plainair Easton, sponsored by Y Financial Trust. And the winner is Forest Landing Farm, Lori Marr. come to Best Architectural, sponsored by the Historical Society of Talbot County. The winner is Brooklets by Thomas Bucci. The next award is Best Marine, sponsored by the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. And the work is See You Tomorrow by Zufar Bikwa. <laughs> Chesapeake by Leonard Miserec. The next award is Life on the Farm, sponsored by the Tidewater Farm Club and the Talbot County Farm Bureau. The title is The Farmhouse by Neil Hughes. We next come to third place in the competition, sponsored by September 1st Partners. And the winner is the title, Another Beautiful Morning in Oxford by Jeff Williams. Oh.
And second place, sponsored by the Academy Art Museum, the title is Summer Symphony by Mary Vega. This is the Artist's Choice Award, and I have been designated the guy to read it from the artist. And the sponsored by Pally and Scott Asplund. And the, the picture is entitled Bound by Daniel Robbins. So I, I, I'm really yeah, going to just say a few words about this award and uh, the person for whom it was named, uh, Timothy Dills. Uh, when Plenary Easton started, now I can't believe it, 17 years ago, uh, it was just an idea that we thought might work. And yeah, I've been thinking a lot about what it means to have vision. And there are certain people who really can see things that do not yet exist. And Timothy Dills was one of those people uh, in, in all sorts of ways. He you know, was a, a developer who, who uh, really changed the face of Easton in a very positive way. Uh, he was a huge supporter of the arts across the board, yeah, and yeah, certainly it, as it relates to the Avalon. And, and he was the person that made it possible for us to take a chance on a new idea. And yeah, for that reason, the grand prize has been named on his behalf ever since. Um, Ellen Votney, who has sponsored this award since Tim's passing, uh, was you know, married to him for a number of years and also was the founder of the Avalon Foundation. And yeah. So you wanna talk about a power couple, there it is. Uh, um, Ellen is, a, is an incredibly special person to a lot of us, but again, yeah, the, the ability to see things that are not yet true yeah, is something that I think that the two of them really shared. Uh, certainly the vision of what the Avalon could be and has become yeah, w yeah, came from taking a chance on a theater that really yeah, had yeah, fallen yeah, into disuse and she saw the possibilities and, and so many more after that. So uh, Ellen is an incredibly important and good person. Uh, and yeah, so was Tim Dills. He really, uh, we would not all be here but for, uh, for his belief in the possibilities. So with that. <laughs> So the grand prize, the Timothy Dills Memorial Award, sponsored by Ellen Botney. The title is A Little Bit Louder Now by Tim Kelly. <laughs> So far, how it feels to receive an award? Another one.
<laughs> it's always exciting. It's um, we have one more day, actually two more days. So one quick draw. I'll do my best. Yeah. I know it's a fair competition. It's not fight. It's really um, this way of doing your best, and you know it's a fair game. So I wish not only to myself but to all my peer artists success. And if I mean, of course, awards are given to all to one or another friend of mine. I'm happy for them. And then we have the minis um, revealed on Sunday. And uh, I mean, I'm not. I don't think I'm very good with a quick draw, but with minis, at least I would like to talk to people who come to the show, how they feel about my painting. That's really very recharging. Gives me feedback and feel good that I do important thing. Good. Thank you. This is Tim Bell. Look at his work, but unfortunately, all his work is the same. Same boat, same kind of structure. And this is Kyle Bachlin. Very good work. I like his work. His brush work is awesome. Now we're going back to the gallery, main gallery with uh, competition pieces. And we'll check, yes, and we'll check the um, all the paintings, and hopefully Zufar will be nice to comment those paintings. What he think, Zufar? You think he will do it for us? Welcome to Academy Museum of Art in Eastern Maryland. <laughs>
So let me introduce you to Hamilton, right? That's right. Yes, and he's one of the participating artists in uh, here in uh, Easton. So, now, this is your two competition pieces. Yes. So tell us a little bit what do you, where you painted and what, what you were thinking about it. So when I first pulled into my host's house outside of Easton, there's this magnificent farm right across the street from my host family's house. And uh, through multiple visits, I, the orientation is, if you look one direction, you see the cows. The other direction is this very, uh, at night, a very lonely scene of an old pump house where the, the farmer fills up his, uh, he refills his tractor. And, um, and then during the day, of course, it's very lively. While I was painting this, I, they were bringing in new cattle and acclimatizing them to the new, their new environment. So this was a very lively scene. This was the, the very quiet night. So I feel like this, for me, is a very quintessential um, Eastern scene, which is these, the, the flat land sort of the loneliness of the farm and the, the long roads and the distant tree lines. So uh, sort of flip sides of, of, of the same theme. Wow, very good. Let me show you the actual closing of beautiful painting. So th is this considered as a nocturne or this is uh, more like a... It's right on the edge, but I right consider it a nocturne. Right when the sun went down, the, this light switched on and stayed on all night. And, um, this was a challenge for me because I am not familiar with the anatomy of cows. <laughs> and so I was trying to, I was going back to the same spot over and over again, trying to sketch them as they were moving. And um, I had some comments that they looked at times more like bears or some other mystery animal. Uh, but maybe next time. Well, <laughs> no, they really, a little they, bit they really like, especially this is looking like a cow. This is definitely a cow. <laughs> yeah, this is looking like. This cow doesn't like this cow. <laughs> <laughs> I almost called it mystery meat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but a beautiful word. Well, Thank you. Well, we wish you... Actually, I have a question. So do you have, they have a wash here, or what, what, how many coats do you have? Actually? So um, I was working on a white canvas for the first time. I usually tone my canvases, but uh, this year I used white, and I just put on my first layer in a very drippy coat of... Uh, uh, I used half transparent gesso, half regular gesso, and it has a, an absorbent quality, which allows me to very thinly wash in the whole first layer, but then that gets soaked up and then I can go more impasto for the second layer. So I would say that this is pretty much one coat, but I went back to the same spot perhaps three times and picked off those little moments of contrast and tried to develop them that way. Maybe, hopefully, we will catch Feldon somewhere else and we will uh, see him actually doing maybe a small demo for us, huh? Yeah. Maybe an honor. Yeah, all right. So, all thank you. Thanks, Vlad. Thanks. Thanks. Nice to meet you. All right, so this is Stephanie Amato. This is uh, Olena Babak. Actually, she, she's from Ukraine, Ukrainian artist. Uh, look her work. Very nice work. This is Susie Baker. This is Alison Berry. This is Jill Basham. I love this piece. Very lovely piece. That's that. Uh, what a mixable colors, oil colors. She paints like a Charlie Hunter. Tim Bell. Uh, one painting is gone. This is the far. This is a winner piece that they took it to winner uh, winner gallery. This is uh, Lon Bauer, Thomas Butchin. This is actually a painting by Kyle Buckland. Um, 
nice painting as well. Philip, California. This is Harry Cole. Beautiful painting. CEO of the Avalon Foundation. Yes, okay, so what did you think about this year? Yeah, it, it was really great to have an event at all this year after you know, such a challenging last couple of years. Um, and you know, the energy that the community brought, you could just feel how excited people were to get back out and to be able to you know, share artistic experience with one another. And it's true for, from the artists, it's true from the collectors, yeah, just the, the entire community that embraces this festival was so eager to, to you know, be, be a part of it again. Yeah, and that felt really, you know, really good. I, I would say that you know, this year we are close to what our normal festival looks like. There's a few little things that are different, but mostly, yeah, it's back into the swing that we have done for uh, yeah, many years now. And yeah, it, it, it really is yeah, gratifying to see that everybody still yeah, values what, yeah, the you know, Plenar Easton and the, the wonderful artwork that gets created here. When, when you look around this gallery and the, you know, and think that none of this exi existed a year ago, it is really remarkable, the talent that comes to East and, and makes you know, this event possible. Yeah, well, thank you. This is one of the best show you know, we have seen this year. Very good. So, um, it's ex I consider this a ex success. So far, Huge yeah, success. you know, I, I certainly from a sales standpoint, we've uh, had very strong sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that feels good. Yeah, that's great for all the artists who have yeah, are, are participating and yeah, um, just again the community support is pretty overwhelming. It feels great. You have a good location for that. What's that? <laughs> you have a good location for that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it certainly um, could be, be better. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we have a, we live in a beautiful place, and, and again there are a, a lot of folks that really understand that. Yeah, if, if you want to have a great arts community, then people have to go out and pay for art. Yes. Um, and yeah, that that does happen here, and, and yeah, we are grateful to all of them who share our love for you know, for plenary paint, painting and yeah, this this place. All right, well, thank you very much very good. Yep. for you know, the awards and Absolutely. for all the work that you've done uh, sure so thing. far. It's you beautiful. Bet. All right, thanks. Well, let's go around and see some other work right here. And Carly, work. Yeah. 
This is actually, this lady is a new to uh, this event, but she has a really good payment. And she sold. And the price is not, she needs to raise her prices. I can tell you, beautiful body of work this year. Beautiful. going to see a winner so this <laughs> Larson mr. Larson teaching how to use the camera to photograph Kurt. <laughs> no you out of picture all right, so we are in the winner, uh, actual winner gallery. So all these paintings are the winning paintings. So let's go and see those winning paintings. So let's start with this one. Um, this is uh, Neil Hughes painting. Gorgeous painting. Look at this brushwork. Look at that brushwork. It's not, it's sometimes hiding. Sometimes I cannot find timers. All right, let's try this. Turn it. And this is Daniel Robinson. Danny Robinson. Beautiful painting. Flash is disabled, probably because you're, what's it say? And this is Best of Show. By Tim Kelly. competition is over we are in the gallery of um, winners so all the pieces right here you can see as uh, are uh, all the pieces are the winners pieces uh, about 15 or 16 paintings that are winners and uh, Zupar which is right now he's uh, goofing with uh, <laughs> Larson <laughs> taking pictures uh, is one of the winners uh, we were hoping to actually get maybe best of show or artist choice but uh, he's okay uh, because some other painter got the and got awards he got many awards so it's all all good we not competing uh, we painting and Eastern Plain Air is uh, one of the best uh, competition in United States and I think in my opinion humble opinion in the world so it's over actually let me take it back it's not over over tomorrow we have a quick quick draw uh, I will be painting as well so far we'll be painting uh, and I will hope to get or to take some footage and there will be not probably another episode about quick draw but for today it is done I'm gonna catch so far to explain maybe the final painting of that nocturne so let's get to him and talk to him and this will be all for today so so far and gratefully to you one more time and please tell us about this painting <laughs> so this is best marine painting I'm very humbled and honored to get this award definitely both paintings I submitted are about the water and Chesapeake Bay is, feels like a big water of the sea marine ocean um, I would say only artists probably uh, understand how difficult it is to paint nocturnes, how to get, how hard to get right darks. Uh, it's how hard to get everything balanced, and how hard to plan the painting because um, in the moment, especially this right, like a dusk after sunset, it lasts just maybe for 
20 minutes at this stage as it's presented here. Not enough time to paint. And after first day, second day, I would say night of uh, painting, you start kind of getting, not nervous, but think like, what time and it should come next time to catch right colors, values, and so on. So it took me four visits to this place. Once I've been just planning, thinking, did sketch, and then um, I thought I came ready with a tone canvas. But then I've seen this beautiful sky and been inspired with it, and it looks like everything matched. Also, <laughs> the best view actually was from the boat, and I would have to ask permission to paint from it. It was not possible at night. So three nights, painting was done, and um, surprisingly, of course, moment cannot stay like still. I was coming at the sun way above, over the horizon, just to make sure that all my darks do not have too much of green, do not have too much of blue, which easily get mixed when it's getting darker. I have pretty nice uh, night light, uh, which I designed with then my dad helped me to do that, then I redesigned it, and um, also I would say I had help from above because when I was finishing this painting, thunderstorm just passed with very weird clouds, and the humidity went tremendously down, and that was so comfortable, so I just had no issues standing there for until like 1.30, 2 in the morning. I mean, I'm happy with this painting, and as I'm happy with my another painting which didn't get award um, and we'll talk about that painting next time <laughs> oh any questions cool and this is our light <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> light <laughs> technician <laughs> Kirk Larsen all right so this is all for today uh, we're gonna go chill it was a big day and uh, we'll do tomorrow quick draw so we need to rest and get ready for tomorrow and uh, hopefully i will um, shoot some footage for for quick draw tomorrow so we'll see you tomorrow